Hello YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day today and are ready to jump into some DIYs. For today's video, I'm challenging myself to recreate some viral DIYs that I've seen on Instagram. I've actually had these projects bookmarked for quite a while and I know you guys are going to love them because one of them is actually one that I get requested all the time. Recreation videos are always so much fun for me because I love showing you guys the process and I also just love challenging myself and getting creative and making the project mine. So I really hope that this video inspires you guys to do the same. I also want to give a huge shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. So I'll talk a little bit more about them later. And before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. And let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay. So first up on the chopping block is actually a project that's inspired by this mirror that I have. I picked this up at the Target dollar spot for only five bucks. And whenever I post a picture of this, someone will usually DM me and ask if I DIY'd it. And I wish I did because it honestly looks really good, especially for a $5 mirror, but I didn't. And honestly, every time I think about DIYing this, it intimidates me a little bit. So I've never actually attempted to recreate a project like this before. But as I was scrolling on Instagram, I saw a video where someone kind of created the same vibe. So this is the video that is inspiring this project. So as you guys can see, she's using craft supplies that you can find at any store, which is really great because that means that these materials are more accessible to you guys to recreate as well and all you really need for this project is a glue gun and some patience i'm 99.9% .9 sure that i have all the materials that i need for this project so let me go grab those really quick i am using these dowels from dollar tree so i have two sizes here and whenever i'm at the dollar tree i always pick these up because you can do so much with them and depending on how large the mirror is you can go with the bigger size or go with a smaller size i think the small one is going to be perfect to kind of match this size and i also grabbed a mirror at the dollar tree which I was so surprised to see because a lot of times I can't find the round ones I usually find the square or the hexagon ones and this one is actually a little bit larger than this so I think it's gonna be perfect with the dowels that we do have and to be honest I'm a little bit nervous for this because I want this to be perfect and as good as oh <laughs> Anyways, so I want it to be as good as this and I know not every DIY is going to be perfect But we are going to try so let's go ahead and get started Hello from voiceover Tina. To start our first DIY, I found a bowl that was just a tiny bit larger than the mirror that we're using for this project, and I'm gonna trace that on a piece of cardboard to create a circle template. And I went with a circle that was just slightly larger because I didn't want it to show too much behind the mirror, but this is all gonna depend on how large or small your wooden beads are. Once that's all cut out, we're using some hot glue to stick the mirror right onto the cardboard and I'm going to hold it until it dries. And now it's time to glue the dowels to the mirror, so I'm dabbing a small line of glue onto the cardboard part and I'm going to try my best not to put too much, otherwise the glue is going to overflow onto the sides and you definitely do not want that. And with a small wooden bead, I'm just placing that right next to the dowel and I'm holding it in place. And I'm also making sure that the holes are touching the dowels just so that we can hide that part. If you have little wooden balls or even half rounds, that would work really perfect for this project as well. And essentially, we're just going to repeat this pattern of a dowel and a bead all the way around the circle to create our sunburst mirror. And you can really change up the design depending on how large or small your beads are. So if you're using larger beads, you'll have less dowels. And like I mentioned, I'm using wooden dowels to match closer to the mirror that I already have. But the original tutorial I watched used popsicle sticks, so that's all going to be up to you on your own personal preference. And since we're using wood, you can even stain it or paint it beforehand to give it a fun color change. And if you really want to get funky and give it more of that sunburst look, you can also create a pattern by alternating short and long dowels for a completely different look. And there are just so many fun ways to personalize this. And as I was getting closer to the end, I was super excited with how the mirror was coming along. I thought it looked so good and it only cost me a couple of dollars to recreate, which is always a plus. This mirror makes such a statement on your wall and I especially love using decorative mirrors in gallery walls and this one is just so perfect for that. By DIYing, we're able to personalize the size, shape, and color to fit within our spaces and I'm just super happy with how this one came out. 
So before we get into the next project, I wanted to talk a little bit more about today's video sponsor, Squarespace. As you guys already know, I'm working on my website right now, and I'm really pleased with how it's coming along. Squarespace is a one-stop shop to create a beautiful website that is customized to your own needs. They have so many great templates to choose from, and you can customize it to exactly what you need it for. So whether you're a small business that needs to sell your product or service, or a creative in need of a one-of-a-kind portfolio, Squarespace has all the tools to help you succeed. They have an endless library of free resources that are available to you guys and I also really appreciate their support team they've been super helpful in this whole entire process and if you guys are interested in checking out Squarespace be sure to check out my link down below for 10% off of your first website or domain and I have all the details down there for this next project I'm actually following along just some pictures that are on Instagram so as I'm scrolling around it's just kind of like a step-by-step -step tutorial and it actually looks simple enough but I haven't done any embossing besides using letters on some polymer clay so for this one they're using a crochet doily so I have one from Dollar Tree that I'm going to use as well as a smaller one with more details on it and it also looks like they're using air dry clay which is something that I haven't played around with in a couple of months I think so I'm excited to get back into that so I have my air dry clay here and I want to make a larger version as like a wall hanging and then I also wanted to try out using some polymer clay and making a smaller dish to use as kind of like a trinket dish I want to find a way that we can personalize this project and give it as a gift so that's what we're doing with the polymer clay. I often get asked how I choose between air dry clay and polymer clay. So we're gonna go a little bit over the differences between the two. I'm really excited for this project and we're gonna start with the air dry clay first. All right, you guys, so for this project, I'm rolling out a giant slab of clay, and this is going to be just wide enough for my doily. I am using air dry clay here, and since this doily is quite large, I was rolling for a while. It took me over 10 minutes to roll this out and made me quickly realize that I needed a bigger rolling pin for larger projects like this. And whenever I'm rolling out a slab like this, I always like to take my time just because this is the foundation and is also one of the most important steps in starting any clay project. Now we're just going to take our doily and face the good side onto the clay and I'm just centering that as best as I can. With the rolling pin, I'm rolling right over it until I notice that the clay started building up in between the little holes. And at that point, you can tell that it's really embedded in there. And this part made me especially nervous because I was worried that the transfer wasn't going to be clear. So I made sure to go over it several times. So now it is time for the moment of truth. So we're going to go ahead and peel our doily off and reveal our beautiful embossing. I know I said I was a little bit nervous for this, but I was quite impressed by how well it picked up all the little details. You can really see all the little weavings in here and it brought out so much texture. And now it was time to cut off the excess, so I kind of just went along the original design and I made these curved edges and it ended up creating this beautiful flower shape. And before we let it dry, you guys know that I cannot leave any edge unfinished, so I just used my finger and I lightly tapped at the side to smooth it all out. Then I let this piece sit out for days to dry, and this piece is very thin, but also very large, so you definitely want to wait a few days before you paint it. And you know when it's dry and ready to be painted when it turns white, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep this very simple and paint it with a light tan color. And for this project, you definitely want to do a dry brush technique, so I just tried to get into all the little crevices. I did want there to be a tiny bit of dimension, so if I missed a couple of spots, that was totally fine with me. And then we're gonna let this sit to dry down, and it's done. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this project, I did want to create a smaller polymer clay version. So just like the air dry clay one, I'm going to roll out a slab of clay. And for this version, I'm using a smaller doily and this one is crochet and it's also a lot thicker than the Dollar Tree one. But we're going to do the same process and face the good side down and then roll it right onto the clay. And again, as I'm rolling it, I'm making sure that it's deep enough to stick in the clay and emboss it. And I also rolled from the center outwards and kind of avoided that middle part because I didn't really want it to be too embossed. And when I removed the doily, I was quite surprised by how much texture there was. Since this one was crocheted, it had a lot more weaving and I think the pattern just looks so gorgeous. I wanted to add some customization to the middle part, so I'm going to smooth it out a little bit to create a flat surface. 
To go along with this floral look, I wanted to add in the word bloom in the center and I'm using these little cookie stamps to spell it out. This is actually my first time using them and I really like these because they interlock with each other and they give you a perfectly straight line. In the past, I've also used rubber stamps but those were a little bit trickier since I had to line them up and they would never be straight. So these were super easy to use and also look super cute. After that, I just cut it all out and I wanted to create a leaf shape with a little bit of a border around the whole design and doing this gave us this beautiful flower shape. Before putting it to the oven, I'm going to smooth out the edges as best as I could with some rubbing alcohol. And the reason why I wanted to use polymer clay for this project is because polymer clay is a lot more waterproof than air dry clay. So if you're planning to do this project for something that's going to have a lot more wear and tear, I would definitely recommend using polymer clay. And once it's all smoothed out, I put it into a ceramic bowl and this is gonna create the perfect bowl shape for our little dish. And you just wanna make sure that you're using an oven safe bowl made out of ceramic or glass. And we're gonna go ahead and place that right into the oven for 15 minutes at 275 degrees. Once that's all cooled down, I'm using 400 grit sandpaper to smooth the edges out one last time. And it was also at this point that I wish that I made my dish a little bit thinner because it was quite thick and there were a few imperfections on the side. But honestly, you live and you learn and I thought it looked fine after some sanding. To paint it, I wanted to see if I could create a light wash of color, kind of like a sheer glaze. So this next part was a little bit of an experiment, but I put in a tiny dot of acrylic paint into a water-based polyurethane. So I mixed that up until it was all even, and then I painted it onto the backside to test it out, but it was looking a little too sheer. So then I added in more of an orangey and a brown paint, and I think that it looked a lot better. I was just a little bit concerned about the brush strokes, so then I just went ahead and just used my finger and rubbed that onto the surface and that actually worked out pretty well. So after testing it out, I just went right onto the design with the paint and poly mixture and my vision was to have the color darker in the deeper parts of the embossing and then have a light glaze on the more raised parts. This gave it kind of a vintage feel and I went back and forth with my paintbrush and my finger and you can kind of see that I'm just rubbing out the paint as I went along and I found that this method worked exactly how I wanted it to. This did such a great job of emphasizing the texture, which otherwise would have been lost a little bit if you just painted it with regular acrylic paint. Of course, you can customize this and color however you'd like. And if you want a little bit more of an intense color, you can go ahead and do a second coat, but I just did one thin layer and then I let it dry before painting it with two coats of polyurethane. This project was so simple to do, but I think it looks amazing and I'm so in love with the texture on both of these pieces. I'm a little bit obsessed with the dish that we created and I think it looks so great with the glazed paint that we created and I definitely plan on using this technique again in the future. So that wraps it up for today's video and I hope you guys enjoyed those projects and as always let me know which one was your favorite down below. I would love to know your thoughts on them and if you guys recreate any of the projects from today's video make sure to tag me on Instagram. I also post on there every single day. Shout out to everyone who's been tagging me in their posts. I absolutely love seeing them and a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. If you guys are interested in checking them out and getting 10% off of your first domain or website be sure to click on the link down below. That is it for today's video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Stay inspired and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.